Hello everyone, and welcome to four great things about The Surge 2. My name's Alex, uh, also known as Scatterling or Zap Lasers, depending on whether you play uh, Xbox or PlayStation. The Surge 2, which you're, uh, you're seeing on your screens right now, is a third-person action RPG that's out now on Game Pass. It's got a, a Soul Spawn inspired loot system, uh, punishing uh, enemy combat, enemy respawn, and uh, uh, amazing massive boss battles. I've really enjoyed my time in this uh, nano-infected dystopia, so here, uh, without, without further ado, are my top four reasons why you should be playing The Surge 2. Number one, the combat system. It's fast-paced, it's dynamic, and it gives you a frankly bewildering number of options for taking out your opponents and dispatching your enemies. The lock-on system allows you to target individual enemy body parts and limbs so that you can bisect, delimb, and even decapitate um, your opponents. This is also the primary mechanic by which you get loot. By severing limbs and, and, and heads, you access the armor or weapons those limbs or heads were holding or, or, or wearing. When you're up against multiple opponents and uh, some of the level's more uh, threatening robotic enemies, the combat system gives you a real sense of efficacy, like you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with these enemies and really give them what for. To help you avoid enemy attacks beyond simply strafing, the game has a blocking and parrying system. A well-timed block can significantly reduce the incoming damage, but a perfectly timed directional block will also throw the enemy into a staggered state. This will leave them vulnerable to your follow-up attacks and make you feel like an absolute boss. Nowhere is this more useful than when you come up against the game's various robotic enemies. These enemies sport cheating weapons such as extendable arms that can reach you across half a level and what can only be described as Dr. Evil inspired rocket launchers attached to their heads. In most cases you'll have to target the offending weapon limb in order to destroy the robot in question, but here you do have some support. A micro drone fitted with a heavy firearm is attached to your back so that if you have an enemy who's cheating and hiding under a bridge firing rockets at you, you can do this. Like an absolute boss. Even when you are pushed onto the back foot by, say, an enemy sneaking up on you while you're doing your victory dance, the variety of evasion and combat options available to you allow you to remain in control of even the most unexpected situation. Number two, the story. The Surge 2 has a very compelling story. It's told through in-game cutscenes, as you'd expect, but it's also woven throughout the environment in a way that I found both intriguing, it made me want to explore the levels in more detail, but at the same time harrowing in the extreme. Here, I came across a child murder laboratory quite unexpectedly. Humanity has played its role. Exit stage left. Nobody's gonna ask for an encore. What use are we when our own creations eclipse us? Soon humanity will be to machines what our pets are to us. Obedient slaves, content to serve their masters. But even this shocking child murder laboratory is not immune from a hidden mini-boss, dropped in, I can only imagine, to keep me on my toes. Now you'll notice that despite getting the drop 
on this guy with a tractor beam modification to my gun drone, I'm not... I don't have the upper hand in this fight. This is because the small confines of the laboratory, but much more importantly, my emotional state at the time, are combining to make this contest far closer than it really should be. The boss is also sporting a shield, which I find very difficult to break through in the early minutes of this combat, making it almost impossible to target the boss's health directly. However, once that shield is broken, uh, it becomes a simple case of targeting the boss, of throwing out a couple of perfect directional blocks, and then taking out all of my penthouse aggression on this poor dude's torso. Take that. Which brings us on to number three, the NPCs. Here's a call for perseverance to those who are righteous enough who range from the ridiculous you two should find sweet salvation in death's cold embrace behold they have come from high above and everyone will witness their glory to the repetitive what the hell's going on? did someone explode a nuke? what the hell's going on? Did someone explode a nuke? To the lovable and loyal retainer whose plight is downright pitiable. I'm so sorry, Ben. I cannot move. My defense routines are all clogged up. The hackers have me right where they wanted. I'm a useless metallic vegetable. I don't know how much longer I can hold back the nanite virus corrupting my OS. Each one is clever, many are very funny and well written, and even the silly ones helped bring the world to life. And finally, last but by no means least, we come to the final entry on this list, to the boss battles themselves. Throughout The Surge 2, you'll fight a variety of bosses, from a fat dude riding a robot spider, to the nano beast you're seeing on your screen right now. Each one has different complex patterns to learn and avoid, and I found they really tested my armor and weapon modifications to the limit. You really have to learn to balance your healing, stamina consumption and energy production, whilst consistently targeting enemy weak points, being aware of the boss's position within the arena and any mutations or metamorphosis it's going through as well. When it all goes wrong, you get owned pretty fast, but if you get it right, you feel like you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these behemoths in a way that I've not seen in other games like this. In fact, I'd say my favourite thing about this game is the feeling of parity I had when the boss fights went just right. Cheeky. As a final example of the variety of modifications that you will find indispensable in the game's various boss fights, during this fight I am using an armour modification which is increasing my health and stamina regeneration when I'm in the vicinity of loot dropped in a previous run-through. See the green diamond on the screen? counter in the top left. These are the, uh, the tech scrap that I dropped when this guy killed me last time. This extra boost is allowing me to learn his attack patterns, to figure out when he's going to roll. When those rolls are going to crush me directly into a wall. When he's going to use his nano surge and fry me like some chicken. And when is the best time to throw my evasives in the mix? 
armed with that knowledge, it's merely a simple case now of going toe to toe with this behemoth. With timing my attacks perfectly, and in owning this boss like, well, an absolute boss. Or sort of. In any case, this is the Surge 2, and this is four great things about the Surge 2. If you uh, have Xbox Game Pass, if you're a subscriber, this is uh, available now on Xbox Game Pass, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be snapping it up. Why not? It's free, and it's an amazing game. If not, if you are uh, uh, buying the games from the Xbox Store, um, I think this game is very much worth its price tag. It's an amazing game and it will keep you entertained and, and coming back for more for weeks and weeks at a time. I've been Alex, also known as Scatling or Zap Lasers, depending on whether you play Xbox or PlayStation. And I'd really appreciate a like on this video. If you've got a moment, please click the like button. Please click the subscribe button and I'll be making more of these videos uh, in, the, uh, in the weeks to come. Uh, until then, I will leave you with the end of this boss fight and me um, uh, taking this guy down. I do own him eventually. Stay tuned, it will happen. Um, otherwise, it's uh, goodbye from me, goodbye from the studio, and uh, stay safe out there everyone. Bye! Thank God, you killed that beast.